On behalf of Namita Gokhale, William Dalrymple, and all my colleagues at Teamwork Arts, welcome back to JLF's Brave New World, Season 2. Our magazine partner for the series is The Week, Journalism with a Human Touch. Those of you who missed our earlier episode, The Firestarters, Yan Carson in conversation with Dan Jayanti, Naju Seth, you can catch this on our YouTube channel, Jaipur Lit Fest JLF, or on our Facebook page, JLF Lit Fest. Our next session today is Serious Men, Sudhir Mishra in conversation with Vani Tripathi Tikku. Award-winning author Manu Joseph's novel, Serious Men, has recently been adapted by Sudhir Mishra into a Netflix movie and stars the iconic Nawazuddin Siddiqui. It delves into the life of a man who unwittingly starts a chain of uncontrollable events as he attempts to promote the myth he has created around his son. Celebrated filmmaker Sudhir Mishra speaks about the many layers of the film and its piercing look at a divided and aspirational India. In a conversation with Vani Tripathi Tikku, he also discusses the experience of bringing this narrative onto an OTT platform and explores the story's many satirical levels of class, love, ego, and ambition. So Dehir Mishra is an Indian film director and screenwriter known for directing critically acclaimed films, including Hazaro Khwaishe Esi, Dharavi, and Chameli. With a career spanning over 30 years, his work has been recognized by the world, of course, by the government of India, and he's received three national awards from the president of India. Vani Tripathi Tikku is the youngest ever member of the Central Board of Film Certification. Her campaigns and outreach programs have focused on encouraging women's participation in politics, as well as issues re revolving around education, empowerment, and employment. All our sessions that have been broadcast till now are available on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channels. Please do remember to ask questions and comment by typing it into the comment section below. And in case any of you drop off due to bandwidth issues, you can find us on our Facebook and YouTube channels. Ladies and gentlemen, Serious Men, Director Sadir Mishra, in conversation with Vani Tripathi Tikku. Over to you, Vani. Welcome, friends. And um, I'm very, very happy that I have my friend, uh, accomplished filmmaker, and somebody whose work I've followed for many years, decades, Sudhir Mishra, with me today. And we are going to talk about his new film, Serious Men, uh, which is uh, making a lot of uh, uh, noise, all in the right uh, uh, tone and tenor. And also a glorious filmography of more than three decades of Sudhir and what his uh, opinion and his uh, uh, ideas uh, regarding cinema are. Welcome, Sudhir. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. What a gorgeous, gorgeous film you've made and uh, pertinent film, as I wrote recently, uh, insignia of the times that, you know, you and I belong to. Uh, also, uh, very nuanced in his approach to look at the complexities of life around us, whether it's caste, uh, whether it's uh, societal concerns, like how we treat our middle class, the aspirational part of... Uh, uh, the middle class looking at the elite privilege uh, that people have around us in this country. How does it feel? And tell us, uh, how did you start this journey, this beautiful film that you made? Well, you know, I'd read Manu Joseph's uh, brilliant novel uh, many years ago. Uh, but then uh, uh, my uh, writers on another project, Bhavesh, uh, came to me and said they wanted to buy the rights if I would direct it. And then I read the novel again and I said yes. Uh, with some trepidation because the better the novel, the more difficult the adaptation to films. It's, 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 it's mediums also find their subjects. You know, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult, you know, to, to, to transform something is good for a poem, something good for a painting, something good for a novel. You know, I mean, so uh, it's, film is something else. Film, you shoot action, you, you action mean people moving. It's a concrete medium. You have to, you know, the performances, you have to turn it into a play in a sense. So, I mean, there's a, it's a very different thing, but then we 
took it up. It took about eight months, eight to ten months, to transform it uh, from book to script, uh, and uh, we had to concoct a lot. You have to, you have, you have to take suggestions from the novel. You have to take signals from it, uh, ideas from it, characters from it, and then uh, you know turn it and internalize it. You know almost and and because. As a director, writers, you know, we can't sort of mimic anything. Mm. We can't mimic Manu Joseph's head. Mm. Because how do I say, okay? How do I, you know, okay? A shot. How do I think of a shot? How do I think of a scene? How do I, you know, I can't think this with his head. So I have to, you know, you have to forget the. I mean, the the film owes a lot to the book. but uh, you know now it's a separate entity and you have to see it like that you know like something is based on real life or something is based on a on somebody a biopic or anything you know you have to see it like that and then it becomes another entity and and uh, i think uh, we managed we took out some aspects because the film also i mean a novel is, is you know goes into me his novel goes into many directions i and mani and the sun is uh, just one aspect of it there is acharya the scientist uh, the politics of the science institute his relationship with his wife his uh, relationship with his you know assistant associate uh, junior his assistant uh, uh, his relationship with his colleagues uh, uh, you know the, the 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 science institute forms a very important part of the book in the film it's comes in where it affects ian money's life and ian money and his son's life so i mean that's what we chose to focus the film on the father and son and uh, i think that was a wise choice it works very wise very wise i mean when you look at ian money and the son when you look at the the the, the uh, uh, character of uh, that nawazuddin siddiqui plays and uh, you know uh, the boy it's so effortless and sudhi we all belong to the craft of cinema it can't be that effortless if the director doesn't wishes wishes wish it to be so if the actors who are playing those characters don't dovetail i mean it almost looks like they belong to each other it almost looks like they are father and son tell us a little about this because we we very seldom talk about characterization uh you know and uh, when we talk about the craft of cinema we always talk about oh, how well the writing was how good the editing is how brilliant the cinematography was but i think one of the most pivotal parts of your film most of your cinema i'm going to come to it later is the effortlessness of people on screen and the comfort that they have with each other how how does this happen as an actor myself i would be so happy if i'm that effortless with a co-actor and that too if the co-actor is a child i mean tell us a little about that and what took the prep time you know to achieve that uh, in the film well you know i mean uh, a lot of people say this and and uh, you have to create what is called a state of grace for for, for the in a sense an atmosphere where people are free the kid took a lot of doing we we tested a lot of kids uh, with mukesh habra uh, about 50 uh, more than 50 kids and then uh, it wasn't working in bombay so i told mukesh you know since it's a south indian background why don't you go to chennai so a lot of kids a lot of auditions came from chennai and then we chose two or three kids workshop with them for 15 days and then chose this kid and then we workshop this kid for two months Wow. Yeah. So mm. I mean, yeah, and he's quite a worker. He's quite a actor, and he's a very bright, bright boy who just doesn't tire. He's he's, he's like a he's you know reminds me of professional adult actors. Is you know I mean in, in fact you say जाओ सो जाओ यार मतलब go sleep do something. Relax. Don't come tomorrow. He gets really disappointed. He, if you shoot with somebody else, he gets disappointed and says, "Shoot with me." So he's quite a kid. And then Nawaz and he luckily got along. And, and the best thing about Nawaz is that he lets himself go. Mm. He's got this enormous skill set. Uh, his instinct is brilliant. 
he uh, understands he's really bright nawaz mm. he gets it really quickly the, i mean if you if you uh, the essence of it he gets really quickly <coughs> and then he lets it then he lets himself he sort of surrenders himself to you to the film to the other actors to 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 the atmosphere to the location to to so he doesn't ever leave the location you never find him in the van you know i tell my assistant mm-hmm. nawaz ko bulao bole sir main to yahi hu so he kind of <laughs> does soaks in you yeah, know yeah, without yeah. without it being very so he stays within the but without making a fuss he stays within the character within the atmosphere within it uh, mm-hmm. and uh, works like that and uh, it's my job then to create the context and the whatever and the rhythm of it and the graph of it so uh, he lets lets it go you know and and uh, he's very trusting when he believes in you so i think we we really got along and so did all him and all the other actors and the kid and him and i really got along very well with the kid so i mean it was became quite quite a lot of fun actually the, the the shooting and and uh, and you and and the fun is very visible i mean you are all having fun in the sense that it's a serious film the binaries of so many complex things politics of our time a uh, cast you know the way we treat our children the way the education system mars their intelligence but since we are a jlf one question is very obvious this is a book acquisition sudeep and after a long time we've seen a very beautiful i would not say it's an adaptation it's probably an interpretation of a book which has been in public space for some time manu joseph series man there was a time in various conversations that you and i have had over the years we used to say sarit chand chattopadhyay we used to say prem chand we used to talk about writers and cinema of the time used to reflect the ideas of the literature of its time but it doesn't happen so anymore but yet this is a book acquisition and after a long time we've seen a book turning into a film tell us tell us this marriage of literature and cinema how pivotal it is to the time that we uh, are talking uh, you know about right now and how pivotal it is to you as a filmmaker because i know you're also a man of letters a man of literature coming from the uh, your is family that you do and i often get to hear about literature being the centerpiece of your thought process so many times so tell us what is this amalgamation or this collaboration of literature and cinema in times like ours today i am i'm a, you know I, i i respect literature uh, novels i grew up in a place called sagar in a, in a small town and uh, we were the children of professors and so we had the run of the university so we also had the run of the library so in many summers and many times you know i we i spent a lot of time in in the in the literature section of the library and and i you know in a sense lived in a if you live in a very small town you live in an imaginary world you can't mm-hmm. live there's nothing that you can do very much there so i lived in my own head you know in in the world of books and literature and i think i'm a failed novelist you know i mean i can't handle the terror <laughs> you know the terror of uh, or the or the solitariness of being a novelist uh, but you know the i think initially people who have influenced my head are the novelists a lot of novelists indian uh, english uh, european american a lot of them uh, and uh, you know so i mean i don't think i'm as in let's say if you take america then i'm not i'm more influenced by say uh, you know sol bello or john updike or gore vidal or norman mailer or james jones than martin scorsese and francis ford in the head let's say or i am as influenced by sarat chand chattopadhyay fani nicharnath renu premchand then as much as satyajit ray or gurudat so, you know i mean so i mean the initial days we spent reading right so i mean they kind of triggered our head created a imaginary or uh, you know they were as they were concrete real worlds for us so i mean i i'm always very skeptical of of, of i've never read books in order to make them into films i respect it too much hmm. and, and and i and i think it's an abstract 
medium and everybody i mean like i mean for example a book like 100 years of solitude or uh, nobody writes to the colonel or you know and julia and the script writer or you know uh, so many great books you know i mean uh, here you know as well you uh, you know to transform it into a film is is a, is a you know from that abstract you you, you know that it concretizes too much everybody has their own character imagination of the characters in a book right in, in a sense writes their own book right hmm. in a sense as a, it's a more dynamic interaction between reader and, and the reader is a much more active person right he sits up and reads and his brain is unless you know is triggered you know you're actively participating you know Yeah, uh, cinema can be, especially bad cinema, can be very a passive experience. Mm. Mm. It's a passive, dumbed down experience. In fact, I think cinema is responsible for a lot of flaws in the world. It's a dumbed wow. down, idiotic medium at times. <laughs> you know, because you know that you know, and then it has jumps into all the bad formulas of bad novels and whatever, and creates a very Uh, a stupid notion of the world which gives people very fake ideas you know like you will all hold hands and walk happily into the sunset that life is not gray that is not you know that love the happily the happily that, ever after the love, that, you know, that is dim, not difficult that you know we are not heroic all the time that we are not living in the best of possible worlds but we all have to manage it's a difficult life you know which you know cinema kind of simplifies right Right. So people are always looking for heroes, yes. you know, which they don't find in reality. And, and I think that's uh, it's a very dumbing down. Uh, can be very passive, and especially with the new technology where where sound, you know, is thrown at you, and uh, you know, sometimes even the theater seat is you know vibrating, and you know, it's, it becomes like a very visceral experience. It's, but in its best at its best cinema is perhaps the greatest medium at its well, best the hands in the hands of, of because you know you from the concrete you can go in, in, into the internal you mm -hmm. can remain a mystery so i mean you try and ian money you know is he gray of course he is but you know is he heroic is he not what is he thinking I, it, it, it's a little bit of the mystery of you know we, everything is not sure but you know you don't find out like in life you don't you know you can't enter into another person's head you try and you know create that little ambiguity in him which mm -hmm. avas captures beautifully and and uh, i think it's very interesting if you can do that in terms of leave something to the imagination not answer which is, the, all which, which, is, which, is which is also the end of the film so they it's so beautiful i mean you've left so much unsaid You've said so much in the film through Ian Money, through also the elitism of the scientist, you know, who finally, you know, probably also finds something else in life, you know, through this episode that occurs around him. Also, of the child and the mother, the mother who lives the lie of a spouse, and how, uh, you know, uh, dejected and crestfallen she is when she finds out that you know all this was yeah. such a. Very disappointed. Line. Very disappointed. Very disappointed. Having played, but yet, but, but, but yet, so, I mean, very beautiful and very soft and and you know, very heroic. You know, everybody is a hero in their own ways. Everybody is, has strength in their own ways. Everybody has their own situations. You know, there are people placed in different, and uh, the art job is not to be judgmental, but to see them all. You know. and so on. and so i mean in, in the sense that in, in their spaces they are their own they are the leading men in their own or women in their own lives you know so i mean whoever the even the smallest character when they come on screen that is you know you have to give them that respect you know you can't i mean it's very easy in cinema to 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 take somebody like make somebody heroic and to yeah down somebody else take a great freedom fighter and i mean like uh, you know it's very difficult to take a one person of the uh, of the freedom movement let's say and take another person it's very easy to inflate one's qualities and deflate another's and then 
I'm deliberately not taking names because these days it's yeah, I you know. So I mean, I'm just saying that it's very easy. That's a very simple way of hero villain turn somebody into a you know. But if it, it's more difficult, if if you are mm -hmm. if you are caught in that realm of you know grays and somebody being right sometimes, somebody not being right sometime, and and you know life you know taking over and it's it's a much more interesting thing which uh, audiences have been so taken away from and that they, they are not allowed they have not been trained to see films in that way they have not been allowed to see films in 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 that way so they've got used to seeing cinema in a certain way they've got used to seeing rhythm in a certain way so a lot of people will say for example if a film has this way hindustani mein thehrav kehte hain If the film has some, you know, repose, staying, the staying quality, it, the the staying the say, power. The ending buri hai. You know, everybody has a con. <laughs> editing is the most misunderstood idea of cinema. Everybody has a, you know, every stupid uncle and aunt has have an idea about, you know, including mine have ideas about editing. So you know, uh, this it's a big problem, uh, uh, you know. Uh, so I want to I want to delve deeper into the mind of Sudhir Mishra and these more than three decades of filmography behind you. But it's apt we are talking about serious men. So Manu Joseph uh, uh, is doing a reading, you know, especially for uh, this session. And uh, uh, let's hear what Manu has to say. He wondered if there's a way he could tell his wife how absurd were the occupations of these men and women who so easily frightened her. An old man. wanted to search the atmosphere for microbes that were coming down from space a young woman will soon study two bottles of air this is what people did this was their job in the real world that lay outside the institute it was even more weird majestic men went in cars in the isolation of the back seat studying laptops on their way to work where they will think of ways to fool people into buying cola or a type of insurance or a condom that had dots on it or invest other people's money in the stock market some wrote for the papers about how more and more women were interested in cricket or why afghanistan was important to pakistan or some shit like that and some people rewrote what other people wrote some drew some made faces in front of a camera this was more or less what big people did the beneficiaries of the millionaires are at the end of the tunnel of time this is what they did he could have done any of those jobs oja too and they could have lived in a building that had a lift and when they entered the kind of restaurants where emaciated men parked the carts of fat men they would not be so frightened by the calm of the cold air inside and the smell of the mild spices and difficult names of fish it was so easy to be the big people all you had to do was to be born in the homes where they were born that evening as he went in the institute's shuttle bus to the churchgate station he gawked at the moronic city that was in the hysteria of going home as so everyone here was going home for the first time in the twilight that was now the color of dust in the fury of homes that was a national language because honking had telegraphic properties cars stood stranded all around the bus like ants carrying the corpse of a caterpillar where a bumper ended and another began in those crevices people crossed the road and motorbikes wobbled through honking there was a car system even on the road the cars their faces frowning in a superior way through the bonnet grills where the brahmins they were higher than the motorcycles who were higher than the pedestrians the cycles were the lowest of the low even the pedestrians pretended that they didn't see them the bus had to be something in the structure and i decided it was him lowly but formidable and beyond torment in any given situation in this country i am thought with a chuckle that did not suffice someone was the brahmin and someone was the untouchable as the bus inched through the evening life the traffic grew 
There was no space on the road anymore. A man on the bike was riding on the pavement. When he tried to plunge into the road, a car hit him. He fell down but managed to get up. He looked shocked. That I am loved. After riding like a moron all over the place, observe the face of an Indian when he crashes. He is stunned. This country had become a circus and that was fair. What Ion's forefathers were once to the Brahmins, the Brahmins were today to the world. He looked without emotion at the tall and unattainable apartment blocks that seemed to rise suddenly. In the pathetic clarity of hope that he once had in his early youth, he used to tell himself that a day will come when he will live in one of those buildings that he too will get home, get home in a lift. He knew those homes very well. He knew those lives. After all, he was once a door-to-door -door salesman for Eureka Forbes vacuum cleaners. He saw women group together and meditate and even chant, I'm beautiful. Men who were nothing without their inheritances, dedicated to themselves a song called My Way. And he figured through the many pieces of conversation he overheard in those homes that there were four Beatles and that you had to clap at the incipient guitar piece of Hotel California. He also saw men scoop the shit of the babies and once he even saw a man in an apron take the dishes from the dining table to the kitchen sink. They were the new men. Shut the door, you moron. Moron, imbecile, knobhead. These people didn't call us any names. We kept their name in return. Serious man. रात काला छाता जिस पर इतने सारे छे तेजाब उड़ेला किसने इस पर जान न पाए भेद तारा 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 रात काला छाता जिस पर इतने सारे छे तेजाब उड़ेला किसने इस पर जान न पाए भेद तारा So, Sareer, um, from the time you started work as an assistant, Kundan Shah, Vidhu Vinod Chopra, long filmography, ye wo manzil to nahi, being your first film, but some of the films you've made have been parts breaking. I know you're a very modest man, since I know you since decades. Hazaro Khwaishe Aisi, I cannot not talk about Hazaro Khwaishe Aisi uh, today because we are increasingly seeing comments uh, of all kinds happening around us. Societal comment, binaries of the politics, the economy, and the socio-political thought processes in our time. But when you made Hazaro, it was not just a film which was about or around the emergency. It was not just about people who were rebels. It was about the growth of a nation. It was also about the progress of a society, which from a telescopic or a cinematic point of view got told in a very expansive way. Tell us about Hazaro and of course I want to talk about uh, Chameli, which is another film which stands out. I mean, most of your films stand out for the narrative and the context and the content that they have. But Hazaro remains a path-breaking film you know, in the times that it was made many years ago and so pertinent even today. Why? I don't know. I mean, it's uh, uh, sometimes there, there, there are actually, you know, uh, every filmmaker, three, four, uh, has three, four films in him, uh, you know, which only he can make or she can make. Right. And you should only attempt to actually make those other films. But the problem is we don't know what those three, four films are. So we make the other 20 in order to make those three. <laughs> right. Everybody will be known. Gurudhat is known by four films. Five films. Everybody in the end, there are geniuses. Kurosawa, there are people like that. Ray, you know, I'm not a genius. So, I mean, th those people may be known by 10 films, 12 films. Right. Those are the films only they could have made. What is a great, I mean, the Persian said, what is a great story that which combines that which you have seen and heard with what has happened to you? Wow. Right. Mm. So, I mean, 
until you don't bring in what is original your own what would you bring into the story with what has happened how do you react to the world that you know what you have seen and heard you know so i mean and, and there is this mystery of the subconscious which none of us know but we know that the creative process somewhere triggers it we don't know how you know so um hazaro is a film that i was perhaps born to make right i mean because of my background because of the fact that i have a nehruvian father I had a, a scientist father that i am from lucknow uh, that uh, originally but then i have gone and lived in places like bundelkhand and sagar and i didn't go to villages in order to do research but when i hit a cricket ball went to village my classmates were villagers i went to their house when funerals and and and, and deaths and births right so i mean i i know a village from inside right and i also know i mean it's a fascinating upbringing where you know you have the best one of some of the best minds of any subject as your uncles in a university because that was a campus actually i'm a campus boy i grew up in a university campus i'm i'm i don't think i'm strictly from sagar or anywhere i'm i'm from a campus right so where there are hostel students and nigerian students and arab students and you know all sorts of people and some englishmen who come as you know uh, pro- visiting professors and maharashtrians south indians punjabis jatars ranades malikazunans you know i've grown up like that in a campus with in a, in a, so i don't know we uh, i guess you know i was I, i i had an instinct for that film and nobody not one critic ever asked why is a film about the emergency called hazaro mm. bhai Mm. Where does Ghalib come into the emergency? Mm. So Ghalib is 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 a is 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 the perspective through which I see life a lot. Mm. You know, he's in my head, right? So I mean, so at the end of it, the irony is Ghalib's that they sit together. You know, and you don't know whether it is sad or. I mean, if you so. what is hazaro about it, it is about the vestiges of beauty that are left when youth fades mm. what do you hold on to which is why i mean because we managed to make a film like that it lasts if we had just made a film about the emergency about a problem type of film it won't last right i mean it's the problem goes away the film disappears right but it's mm. about youth and it's also about fathers and sons it's about what we hand over to our children and the children not accepting what has been handed over you know so there is a dissonance between children and fa- uh, fathers and uh, parents and children you know so it's about a lot of their their, their things in, in, in that in that but way. but interestingly sudhi dharvi is about the fantas the fantabulous world the dream world of a taxi driver in dharvi brilliantly made uh, played by om puri His Raat Ki Subha Nahi is a thriller. So look at the genres you've delved in. Chameli is about uh, uh, this uh, woman that Karina Kapoor plays, who's uh, 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 you know a lady of the night, and what happens through that one night. And Koya Koya Chand is a noir film. It's absolutely a noir film. I mean, when I remember seeing Koya Koya Chand, the first thing that struck me was. about how we lost a time and cinematically also we lost that time i mean one of my favorite films is koya koya chand that you made i i i am very disappointed that people don't get koya koya chand yeah so koya koya chand is not about the background koya koya chand is the 60s yes absolutely so it's about the strict 60s the social structure of the 60s where people were stratified into roles so there was a hero there was a villain there was a vamp there was a friend that was the structure of a hindi film absolutely so i expected the critics to get this that i took the structure of a hindi film and dismantled it mm. so the hero was not heroic the vamp had ambition and passion the heroine was not pure the villain had forgiveness the friend wanted the heroine 
he was not relegated to the he was not rajinder nath relegated to you know the friend heroes friend so so it was about trying to break away the 60s were, were trying to that film was trying to everybody trying to break away in a sense of roles assigned to them you were emancipating the obvious so, you know so, all the time. So, i mean in the yeah. set in the end of the film is an orgasm hmm she has an orgasm and dies hmm right i mean uh, so i mean that was liberation yes right in a sense so nobody talked about that everybody said oh soali khan is not like meena kumari when was she expected to be like meena kumari yeah, yeah. you know when meena kumari why so, i don't know meena kumari so well i can't i can't dare to you know uh, get it, uh, jump into her mind and pretend that i know her or that i know madhubala or that i pass judgments about them but a lot of times people i don't but a lot of times we make this but a lot of time this is so about you no i mean people not getting one kind of cinema i understand but a lot of time this is said about you even when you made hazaro nobody expected a film like hazaro to come right uh, even israq ki subhani was probably one of the most i mean it was in dark yet it was so dense and it was so deep and it was a thriller and it had great music so lot of times i've heard oh you know sudhir mishra is so ahead of his times is it a way of saying that the complexity of characterization that you do in your films that narrative i mean serious man is is not a, is also not a simple film it's a complexly led film about what happens to people around us in the very context that we are speaking of today does it happen to you that you feel if i would have made khoya khoya chand now maybe they would have gotten it much more or you don't bother about the fact okay they didn't get it then it's fine But they I probably get it now i can't decide that and i can't be pompous enough to believe that i'm uh, ahead of my times and and you know i mean yeah but you know people don't like certain things you know for instance you know when i made dharavi actually there's a big connection between serious men and dharavi if you see rajkaran yes. yadav yes i were my and money right almost this this gray the aspirational the aspirational uh, right. middle class man yeah so at that time people don't want the poor to be aspirational yes so so i mean the 90s i got a lot of criticism from so called social workers who said are ye to yaar business mein karna chahte hain isko to matlab sirf daan mangna chahiye aur haath uthana chahiye aur laat khana chahiye aur mar jana chahiye buri art film ki tarah so wo that 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 poor man had agency yeah that, he had that, that the poor laugh that the poor have their own ambition that the rich or the upper class are not well because they never met the poor they said they don't know and he fantasizes, fantasizes about madhuri dikshit i mean how yeah. fantabulous is that so that culture his own the film begins with a people don't get all this everything has to be concretized you know the film begins with a ektara and you know and a, a folk guy sitting on top of a hill alone playing it you know that music transforms to the you know his music his culture his mind has been taken over by hindi film in mm. in urban context right so it is as, as much about so in a sense he's been that ambition is being also triggered by hindi film so it is both in a sense good and bad you know i mm. mean in a sense it has it's a complicated relationship with with the medium you know and with the heroine as you know as, but madhuri also inspires him in a sense Hmm. So, he does. So, she does absolutely. He's an, I mean, and an inspiration, you know. So I mean, it's not merely a criticism, but uh, so I mean, even I am money is is wants wants a leg up. He has agency, you know. He sees the fraud. He sees through the fraud of of his superiors. What does he want? He knows that you know everybody needs a little. I mean, he knows merit is not everything, you know, because merit is a, a relative thing, and and for his son to. get into that situation it will take three four generations before they can run an even race you know so i mean he he's 
you know, I mean, grey and, and interesting and ambitious and, you know, also self-aware at, at most times. And many people don't like these kind of heroes, you know. Manu Joseph, well, obviously. I, Man, Manu, obviously. Joseph called me, Manu Joseph called me, he wrote an article about me after Das Day, which uh, uh, he said that I'm the collector of frail men. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, coming to the ahead of its time kind of uh, scenario, we are talking, uh, we are talking to each other virtually, Sudhir, in the most dystopian times that we've ever seen. But there's a tectonic shift uh, which has occurred in the past seven months of this COVID, which is that OTT platforms have become the new normal for content consumption uh, in a country like India. I mean, for the glitz and the glamour and the extravaganza of watching a film at the 35 mm space, suddenly content is in our palm. And you're one of the filmmakers who's also um, from the generation which knew the spool and then uh, edited on the spool and then saw the chip and is now uh, just made a film for the OTT. What is this journey like? And is it still true that there's a whole generational shift which still needs to occur for filmmakers to understand the new normal and become accustomed to telling stories the way you've made serious men right now? No, I mean, I think, I think uh, all sorts of things will coexist. And, and you know, like theater still exists. Yes. Right? I mean, they said film will come, theater will disappear, but in its own niche and its own way, you go to London, you go and don't get a theater ticket. I mean, you can get a cinema ticket, you can't get a theater ticket. So in many places, I mean, everything will have to be of a very high standard in order to survive skilled at, 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 you know, at, at an experiential level, it has to be worth it, right? The theatre has to give an experience which only theatre can give. So similar, similarly, cinema, you know, there's, it's irreplaceable going into a theatre, a dark hall and, and sitting with a community. And, and watching a film, you know, in, in that large screen with that nuance of sound and picture and everything. And with a, with a filmmaker controlling it more or less though, even the projectionist controls it, but as, as much as possible, you know, an artist controlling something. So that kind of thing is, it will also occur. And, and uh, so as technology grows, you know, uh, there is another, this OTT is, is, a, is, a, is a great platform for me. It's going to, in a sense, given me another lease of life. Uh, I love the fact it, it brings back the novel in my head, right? Because yeah. you, the long form can go into various strands, right? Cinema is more or less because of scripting classes has become too simplistic. Mm. You can only make a film about this and that, this and that. No side characters. Oh, are you have not completed that story. Oh, what has happened to this? Oh, you're distracting me by, why don't you take out this character? So today you can't write Godfather. Because there's so many characters whom I, if I, I've not read the novel, there's so many characters that I only get a glimpse of. They only give, give suggestions to me. So I have to be able to take suggestions and not be able, no, not want the explanation for everything. But today we want explanations for everything, right? Yeah. But I think it's, it's, uh, this long form gives you uh, a great uh, opportunity to delve into various aspects of something. You, you take uh, uh, something like Breaking Bad, you take something like Better Call Saul, you take The Wire, you know, you take uh, so many of these uh, TV, you know, OTT, call it long form cinema, call it what you want. But, you know, it gives you so much, so many ways to explore things to delve deep and you, you know the good thing about today is you can do anything you want right. you wanted to make a short film do a short film if, because it's a, only a, it's a 20 minute idea you want to do a feature you do a feature you want to do a long mini series do a mini series you can you have something that goes over seasons and explodes like the wire is an idealized a subject for where, where it goes into various, it delves into crime and drugs and street and racial inequalities and many things from so many perspectives. So it takes you 
down so many roads. You can see that world from so many things. So, I mean, I think it's, it's a very interesting time, you know, and I think these OTT platforms are, are uh, wonderful things to happen. You know, so this is a new experience. A young man now sees a, something on a laptop like this with a headphone. Right, he's watching. <laughs> sound is great, and the picture yeah, is right yeah, here. Yeah. It's yeah. another kind of experience which I'm not that used to. I still see transported on a hundred inch something projector and good sound and watch it because that's what I like. I like to respect the filmmakers' work on sound and other things, music. Sudhir, so talking of music, and uh, obviously you spoke of theater. The title track of Serious Men was something which was a a uh, journey down memory lane for me that was a play done many moons ago by Indians including Nawazuddin Siddiqui and Swanand Kirkire Swanand sang it for you the play was called Bade Main Khele Chote Khel which was an adaptation of Archangels Don't Play Pinballs i'm going to hum that one line because it's playing in my head every single day since i've seen the film because it belongs to my youth my i was in school and i used to work with Barry John those years when i saw the play but do tell us how you thought of this and how it became the title track of the film before i end the conversation raat kala chata isme kitne sare chhek kisne the zab dila kon batae de tara ra 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 tara ra 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 tara ra 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 tara ra 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 so tell us how you got this track and This was a theatre production forgotten long ago, and you brought it back to life. In ninety five, ninety four, when the post bandit win, when a batch of yeah, in his Delhi theatre guys, including Saurabh Shukla, came uh, into my life, you know, around Israat ki subeh nahi, they were all acting, and and uh, so many, ha, uh, many normal, and many drunken nights. The night ended with. the nsd and theater voice singing theater songs so this was something that saurabh used to sing hmm so, so uh, i remembered it from 95 so it's been how many 25 years uh, and and uh, so when i thought of this film and i was thinking of this one song that you know first i was thinking of some nonsense song which he likes you know and then suddenly this came and stuck in my head so i found out about it and i asked saurabh to sing it and saurabh remembered it and he sang it then he called his director avtar who sang the second verse because he only remembered the first verse and then saurabh sang both verses and then i sent it to uh, swanand who remembered it in a vague way and sang <laughs> Sang it sang. because it was a uh, sang sang it uh, you know roughly. Then I sent what he sang to the music director arranger, Arnab Saikia, and so then he arranged it and then Swanand sang it again. So I think it kind of you know worked. Beautiful. But sometimes you Beautiful. know just this just a song that you have heard. You know, you, it's not particular. You've not got it written for the film. You know. It does. It's not trying to explain anything. It's just a mood and a, and a, and a feeling and, and something inexplainable. That that works better than something concretely. For the, and so it, I think it works. You know, beginning and you know, it's, you know. So so Sudhir Jiddu Krishnamurti famously said, "The observer is observed." So keep observing, keep ma- making these gorgeous films that you do. they speak about us our lives our times people we forget and people we should remember more power to you and thank you so much for being a part of the jlf brave new world with us today and many 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 more films to you yeah thank you those who haven't seen serious man please see they will i'm sure thank you sudhir Great, thank you, Vani. Thank you, Manu. That was an absolutely brilliant session. And for those of you who haven't seen uh, the series, please do log on and see Serious Men, which is on Netflix. Uh, thank you, Manu, for joining us with that very short reading. That was absolutely delightful. Uh, for all our audiences, thank you. And please do remember to log back on on Friday, the thirtieth of October, 
to watch another set of great sessions on JLF's Brave New World. We begin with a portrait of an artist, Paresh Maiti and Ina Puri in conversation with Kishore Singh, a compelling visual chronicle of one of India's most celebrated contemporary artists. A portrait of the artist in the world introduces us to the inner world and workings of Paresh Maiti. This will be at 7 p.m. IST, 1.30 p.m. Uh, GMT and 9.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, followed by the tribulations of trial by media. Sensational and often toxic coverage by electronic and print media interferes with the due process and judicial inquiry. Accused and victim alike suffer assaults upon their rights to privacy and a fair trial. Reputed journalists and media persons discuss the cause of this criminal responsibility, the ethical and legal framework required to contain this dangerous and despicable trend. This is at 8.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time, 3 p.m. Greenwich Median Time, and 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And a reminder that starting 8th November, we begin with our JLF North America Festival Series, JLF North America Festival Series, with JLF Colorado 8th to the 11th and 15th to the 18th of November, followed by JLF Houston from the 21st to the 22nd of November, JLF New York on the 23rd and 24th of November. And of course, we conclude with JLF Toronto 27th to the 29th of November. Please do remember to block your dates and check your details on www.jlflitfest.org. And for those of you who are watching us on YouTube and wish to support Teamwork Arts and continuing our many projects, Please do support us by buying the YouTube uh, stickers. It really will go a long way in helping out. Thank you all. See you at 8.30 p.m.